welcome back to the channel so i've decided to pick a page from fragile world today um by kirby rosans the main reason being it's my favorite favorite book and the last page i did in here i kind of ruined so i wanted to pick another page to try and redeem myself and make myself happy about this book again because you'll know when you've got a coloring book you really really like when you mess up a page you're like Ugh. feels like a bit a bit of a bummer feels like you're a bit wounded so i really need to redeem myself on this page and sorry i'm just sharpening my pencil being all noisy up in your face um but the last page i did which i didn't like i used a lot of mixed media i used a lot of watercolor that went wrong and acrylic paint so i thought with this one i would just stick to pencil i mean i know the background's like water and it would be probably more more sensible to go in with some watercolour but I'm not going to I'm just not prepared to um make the same mistake again so when I first looked at this page I did see turquoises I thought yeah, I'm even going to bring turquoises onto the actual polar bear as if he's getting all the because he is under the water as if he's getting all the greens and blues um from the water onto his fur and then maybe bring um more of a a gray white mix up towards the top um but the background i see this i've seen it colored loads of different ways but i see this as being a snowy mountain so um and obviously this is to create some movement it looks like that's to create some movement of some sort so yeah i probably won't be tackling that today you won't see me do that today <laughs> but i'm gonna um Start on the little polar bear and see how far we get, I think. So, can we zoom in any more on this page? That is the question. We certainly can. Da, da, da. So, I'm using my Polychromos pencils again. They're the pencil which I just feel more, most comfortable with. So, I'm going to go in with my lightest pencil first. And then I'll go in with some darker, turquoise kind of colours. Um, if I do get, if I jump, it's because there's a big blue bottle in this room and it keeps buzzing around my ear every now and again and then going away again. It's gone out, it might have gone out of the room, hopefully. <laughs> I hate blue bottle flies that, ugh, yeah, yeah. So the first colour I'm going to go in with is the Cobalt Green 156 and I'm just going to put a light layer all over this polar bear. I'm not going to do, look at these little seals, they are seals aren't they? You know what i've seen because there's a double page spread of seals in this book and i keep looking at it and i've seen a lot of finished pages from it as well and the color that i've seen it colored in quite a lot is not the color i expected seals to be i don't know why but when i think of a seal i think of gray colors with like like little dots of black I don't know, is that not the right colour for a seal? <laughs> I'm going to have to um, Google seals before I colour these ones. Because I, I like these pages to be quite quite realistic, she says, colouring a turquoise polar bear. But no, <laughs> I do, in general, I do quite like colouring them as they are. So if an elephant's grey, I'll colour an elephant grey etc <laughs> but yeah i thought i'd do this one on camera just just because i don't think i've done a, f a page from fragile world on camera in a while it's a good job i didn't start the camera rolling when i did that auto page i didn't like because that would have been embarrassing but my finished pages for june is up on the channel now if you want to check that out in fact i'll link it in the description of this video and then you can have a little look don't forget to drop me a little comment i love reading all the comments and hit the thumbs up on the videos that just helps the algorithm when you um hit the thumbs up and comment it really helps the algorithm so that youtube promotes um my videos and pushes them forward to a bigger audience that's what that does for us that's why we are, you always hear 
creators saying hit the thumbs up subscribe like share and all the rest of the good stuff so i think it's going to be quite simple this polar bear actually this is pretty easy to colour things the way I do because <laughs> I don't go into too much detail and too much depth I just and I always put my base down first so I'll always pick the lightest colour that I want to use and I'll always put a base down it just takes that white away you know that it's the white of the paper that can be be intimidating when you see lots of lots of it sort of thing I think Oh dear me, so I've just done the school run. I never normally film this early. It's not even 10 o'clock yet. Um, I think it's about half past nine in the morning. I never normally film this early, never. But I get like a slump in the afternoon. I'm strange, me. <laughs> I get, yeah, I get like an afternoon slump and it's normally around the time I need to pick the kids up from school and I feel so tired. Around two, three o'clock. Two, three, four o'clock, sort of tired stage, and then I fight for a bit if I pick the kids up and make the tea, and then get them in bed. <laughs> so that is my base colour down. Now I'm just going to have a got a spare piece of paper. I've got an envelope I can use the back of. <laughs> Let's use the back of this envelope while I just test these two colours. So I've got two sort of see yeah that one's more blue I don't want that one that one's more blue what color is that bluish turquoise but it's, it is very much blue to me that but I, it is more blue I think I think this one's the one I'm looking for helio turquoise yeah more this color and then I have just picked this color out because I thought it was quite nice earth green 172 to add a bit of green into it, I think that would go really nice with that actually. But that blue's not no, I don't want that blue. I'm gonna get rid of that blue out my sight before <laughs> I end up doing something with it. So I am gonna go in next with the Helio Turquoise 155, and I'm gonna pick out all the darkest areas. So all this where he's put the grayscale sketching in, I'm gonna go in with a hard pressure where it's really, really dark. And then as it comes out here, I'm going to go to medium pressure, light pressure, and leave some of this um, lightness in round, you know, round about, <laughs> round about wherever. And you can always add some more highlights in as well at the end. White paint pens are my friend. <laughs> I love those things. Especially the pen that Debbie gave me, which I need, still need to order more of, so I've got some backups. Because they're brilliant. They're a bit like a Posca pen, the one I've got, but it's like a cheap version, but it's really, really good. It's like I've had the Posca pens before and I've not really liked them. But these cheapy versions are really, really good, honestly. So it will look really rough at first this. This is sort of your ugly stage of getting a bit of colour down and it not being blended and merged yet. But I'm just getting that darkness down first where I want it. It's just mapping out, isn't it? This is your mapping out bit. Where you're putting your colour where you want it to be. I think this is my 15th or 16th page that I'm colouring from this book so far. It is one I'd like to get completed but it's one of them where there's so many pages in it. I'm not sure it's ever going to be done but ideally I'd like it to be a completed book. But we'll see. <laughs> Watch this space. Who would like to see how much I've done in this book so far, like a video where I 
show you all my finished pages in the Fragile World book. If you'd like to see that, drop me a comment down below. And let me know if I have enough interest. And I'll give that a little film for you all. I don't know if I've done it before with this book. I don't think I have. I've flipped through my cute and creepy book, what I've done in that one so far. Camilla Derrico's, because I did quite a lot in that one. Um, I think I've flipped through my Anastasia Ella Called Weaver pages in the Marantine. Um, I don't recall doing this one. I did all my Mariola Budek pages, flip through with those. But yeah, pretty certain I've not done a Fragile World to flip through. If I have, I don't remember it. <laughs> it's a really rich colour, this turquoise, so it's really, really nice. When you go in with that hard pressure in them really dark areas, it just gives so much depth. It's really nice. In fact, I might go in darker up here. Just try and make it really, really deep. Where it's the darkest. I love how Kirby Rosans puts his shading into his illustrations as well because he uses that um, technique where it's like um, lines, is it etching? I always forget what it's called, but it's like they put the shading in with the lines. So the more lines and closer together, the darker the shading and then, you know, etc. <laughs> the further apart the lines and less lines, the lighter the shading. What day is it tomorrow? What day is it today? It's Tuesday today. I keep forgetting because two of my girls had a day off yesterday, Monday, from school. The school was closed because they had an extra bank holiday to use from the Queen's Jubilee or something. So they chose to have their day off yesterday. Um, so I had two of them off yesterday. So I'm all confused today. My daughter came down in a PE kit. I was like, is it PE day? She's like, yeah, it's Tuesday. I'm like, oh yeah. <sighs> Honestly, she's more on the ball than me. She's nine years old. She knows more than me. Honestly. But I've got a lot to juggle in all fairness. I've got like four school settings to juggle. And the but two of them are on transitions this week. Nursery transition transition into primary and a primary transition in to high school and I can't even talk. <laughs> and I still need to hand a letter into the school actually. I'm gonna to have to go after I've filmed this, I think, to hand this letter in. Luckily it's on the rain the corner from our house. Can just go and I could walk up if I wanted to. That's how close it is. But you can see how it's coming together. You can see sort of the depth there, can't you? And you can almost envision what the page is going to look like when it's all done. The only thing I'm worried about is the sort of because I'm using such strong turquoise colours on the actual polar bear, I'm unsure about what colour to do the water. That's the only thing. Or maybe bring a bit of this, this earth green, maybe bring a bit of greenness into the water so the water almost looks a bit like murky. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I might, if anyone wants to follow along with this page, I might do it as a sort of, maybe not 
fully on camera but sort of like I've shown you how I'm doing this polar bear now if I sort of did a little section then did the rest off camera because I've already shown you what I'm doing and then the next time I come back we could work on something else so a bit like that where I'm starting a little bit finishing it off camera and coming back to show you how I do something else like a different aspect um not aspect a different element on the page sort of thing because <laughs> I've done full colour alongs before and they take forever I mean you can see how long this is taking me just to shade this because I'm taking my time because I don't want to mess the page up I'm taking my time with it you can see how long it, it does actually take just to do this bit so sometimes it can get a bit much um, I think the last colour along I did was like it ended up being in like five parts and I think by part three people are fed up you know if you don't want to if you don't want to follow along I think for anyone not following along it's a bit boring to sit there watching me colour for that long sort of thing how many of you actually colour along with any colour alongs doesn't have to be mine but just in general just any colour alongs are you someone what follows, follows along or do you just like watching for the chat and the sort of liking to see how something's created sort of thing Oh, I've been watching this reality program and it is rubbish. I can admit it's rubbish. But you know when there's that sort of them TV programs that are rubbish but you like them. They're like a guilty pleasure type of thing. Well, I've been watching Love Island and my partner came in last night and he's like, how can you sit through this? Like, proper having a whinge. <laughs> like, how can you sit through this rubbish? Da, 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 da. so i said how can you sit through wrestling that's rubbish that's all fake <laughs> and they're just like they're always right aren't they they're always right it's not as bad as this <laughs> you know what i mean by wrestling don't you it's like the ww is it wwe or wwf I don't know what it's called now. It's a few different ones, isn't there? But I remember when I first met him, because we've been together since we were teenagers. And I remember when I first met him, I had to sit through that. I, I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> I mean, I like The Rock now. Now that he's in movies and stuff. And I like him in movies. But in that wrestling? Ugh, no. Just can't. <laughs> there we go how long does it take me to do that little bit 20 minutes just for do that little bit <laughs> this is what happens though when i'm taking my time with a page because i'm just like because i'm having a chat as well i'm just chilling you know them pages where you just want to sit back there's no rush there's no pressure you're just having a little chill it's just one of them this morning and i've got my coffee inside of me i'm all set got my coffee <laughs> my milky coffee i actually bought a different coffee brand because i nipped into a different shop because we'd run out of coffee i nipped into the corner shop rather than the big supermarket and there was only two options of coffee and it's Nescafe Gold, this one. And um, I'm not sure if I like it, but it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. I'm going to drink it and use the rest of the jar up because, you know, inflation and all that. <laughs> I saw a good meme on Facebook last night. It said, um, I found a, it's something like along the lines of, I found a brilliant way to diet. Just fill your car up with gas. I'll fill your car up with petrol and then you'll have no money for groceries. <laughs> he cracked me up. It made me giggle. Oh dear. 
keep getting a lot of them memes cropping up as suggestions <laughs> and meme pages on my Facebook. So I can, I've been sharing a few because I just think they're hilarious. Do you think they're hilarious? One was, um, one was if you ponder over what to cook for tea for long enough, everyone will go and make themselves a bowl, a bowl of cereal. <laughs> That's what we do in this house. I've been guilty of it sometimes, but when I can't be bothered cooking and I've just took a bowl of cereal up to bed, oh, my partner will do it. If I just go in the living room and watch Love Island rather than making anything for our tea, he'll grab a bowl of cereal or a crisp butter. <laughs> oh, it's funny. My kids won't do it though, my kids will be on at me till they get fed. I'm hungry. And it's like yesterday when I had them off school, we still had to do the nursery run because my little boy was still at nursery. So the girls came taking my son to nursery with me for nine o'clock. They'd had the breakfast before we went out. Then we took my son to nursery for nine o'clock. We'd come back home and they were whinging saying they was hungry. I said, it's only half past nine. I said, it's not even. I said, you've had your breakfast. I said, it's nowhere near dinner time yet or lunchtime as you other people call it. <laughs> so it's nowhere near lunchtime. They're like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Honestly, like they've never been fed in all their lives. I said, You don't get your lunch at school at this time. So you don't get your lunch at school at ten o'clock. I said you get it at twelve o'clock. It's just took me forever get my little girl to get her socks and shoes on and in the car for school. It's the most frustrating bit about school. I like it being at school because it gives me that break that I need. Um, gives me that break that I need. But the the morning of just trying to get her dressed and get her out the house, ugh, I do sort of love the holidays from school for the fact that on days when she wakes up when she's not at school she will just get herself dressed in her own clothes no fuss obviously she doesn't have to put shoes and socks on so no problems there and it's just no bother it's just really no bother and then school days are just horrific <laughs> but then in the summer holidays by the end you're like oh i can't wait for school and then the first day they go back and you have to try and struggle, get her, get her in uniform. You're like, no, you can't win. <laughs> you can't win. But it's one of them where nothing really helps as well. It's hard work. Because um, when we saw the paediatrician last and they said it's sensory processing disorder. He said, has she seen OT? Now that's occupational therapy for anyone what doesn't know the abbreviation um and i said yeah she's seen them i said they gave her a sensory diet gave me strategies on how to reduce you know sensitivity and stuff i said but it don't work i said and she don't let me do half of it um i said and then they discharged us because yeah, that's it basically and he said, yeah, I said, with, with sensory processing disorder, he said, we can just give you the advice, he said, and then, and then that's sort of it. You know, they can't do nothing. Um, so it's just one of them things. Just one of them things you've put up with. <laughs> but it must be awful for her, you know, you can't, we don't understand how, you, how it must feel for them. We just, you know, get frustrated because of the meltdowns over it and, you know, all the upheaval in the mornings, but we don't actually know what it feels like for them. I need to remind myself of that sometimes when I'm getting annoyed. When I'm getting annoyed because there's only so much patience you can have in the morning. I mean, this morning she refused to get out of bed completely. She was just in a bed for... It was over an hour. Over an hour I was saying, Hazel, come on, you need to get up. Hazel, come on. 
and every so often I'd walk out the room, I'd come back again like, come on Hazel, we need to go now. We need to go and get in the car and you're not even dressed. <laughs> and she doesn't go. She does not go. But she stayed up late last night messing about, that's why. I kept having to come upstairs and tell her to get to sleep. And as soon as I came downstairs again, she'd be out of her bed again. And they were singing Frozen songs and everything. She doesn't have a TV in her room. So she was just singing these songs from a memory from top of her head, just deciding to have a good old sing song. So yeah, I think it was half past ten before she actually went to sleep. And that's that's why she wouldn't get up this morning. But, you know, you could shout at them all you want and tell them to get back in bed, but if they don't, you know, you can't force them to actually fall to sleep. <laughs> you have to wait for them to fall to sleep. So there's nothing I could do there. I'm liking how this is leaking. Yes, it's taking forever. I apologise, but I like how it's leaking. <laughs> I think these colours um, that I've picked, they're really easy to get a good effect with. There's just them colours in there, what pack a punch. And this is one, this is definitely one of them. Packs a punch. Keep saying I need to buy myself some more single stock pencils there. Because I'm getting low on quite a lot of my favourites. And then I keep forgetting. Cool Pens is a good website to go on to for single stock pencils. I was actually looking for some pan pastels. Just there's a couple of colours that I wanted, but I didn't want to get them off Amazon because they're private sellers on Amazon and I don't want them coming all. You know, I don't want them coming broken because last time I got some off Amazon, they came broken. Um, so I thought I'll have a look if they sell them on Colt pens, but they don't. Um, they have them on Jackson's Arts. But, yeah, I think they're £7 per pan on Jackson's Arts, or just over. £7.19, I think they were. Because I want to pick another pet portrait to do. Um, cause I've not done one in a while. When was the last time I did one? I did one for Debbie, didn't I? My last one. And that was... Oh, was that in April? Was that April? I don't know. It was some time ago. It was some time ago. So I'm, I'm, I'm set to do another now. I don't do them too often. Because they do take all my energy up. And all my head space. Because it is... I find them hard to do. I find them hard to do, they're always a challenge, so I need to be in the right headspace to do a pet portrait. But I feel like I'm I'm due one. I feel like I'm due to do one. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. But I've been thinking instead of doing it on the pastel mat, I've been pondering whether to try and do one on the mixed media strathmore paper that I've got. Um the the torn tan. But I don't think I've ever done one on that paper before. I thought I had, but I don't think I have. I think it's always been the pastel matte paper. So I'm a bit dubious. Because I don't know how the pastel pencils are going to go on when I'm trying to do a pet portrait. I don't know. We'll see. Watch this space. But if I do do one, I will be filming it. It will, it will be a time lapse because... Um, you know, when I do do the pet portraits, they do take me forever, forever, and I make lots of mistakes, so I'm forever rubbing out mistakes and correcting myself, so if I did it in real time, it really wouldn't make for a good video. It really wouldn't. It'd be a lot of stop starting, a lot of umming and airing, a lot of erasing and making mistakes, so it's easier just, just to do a time lapse. Then any stop starting and stalling and all the rest of it, it's just sped up. You don't even notice it um, when it's time lapsed. I'm going to sharpen this pencil. It's a bit, a bit dull now. But 
But all these bubbles and things, if anything, I might go in with a white paint pen or I might just leave them going into the background. Um, but yeah, I'll go over them with pencil for now. And possibly use the white paint pen later when I've coloured everything. <laughs> when I've done everything on the page. So, oh, I told you I'd update you about my diet as well, didn't I? Because I said I'd had a bad week and then I was due to get weighed. I lost four and a half pound. I've got a feeling I'll have put a pound on though this week. <laughs> I tend to do that. I keep yo-yoing like I'll lose like, say if I lose two pound one week, the next week I'll put a pound on. So it's like, you know, I'm still losing weight, but I'm like putting on some of what I've lost sort of thing all the time <laughs> because I cannot keep my head out of cakes and chocolate that's what it is guys that's what it is got a horrible sweet tooth Oh dear, edge of the page. <laughs> so if you're colouring along with me, if you are, if you are, are you going faster than me? You probably are, aren't you? I'm probably going too slow for you. <laughs> but you're like whizzing along. Probably got the whole page done now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Probably got the whole polar bear done. So the seals. Have we got any fish on this page? Actual fish. I don't think we have, have we? They're definitely seals them, aren't they? But it's just from me because they look they look tiny compared to the polar bear. They look like fish. <laughs> but they're not. I can convince they're not. When you're doing snow, when you're colouring snow, what colours do you use for an undertone? Because I'm a bit confused about that in the minute. I was thinking sh snow up here that I want to do, like snowy mountain, but I don't really know how to achieve it. I think I've seen people using like a pale blue undertone and then, can you use grey? Or oh, would grey not work with a, I don't know, what would be best? Maybe I'll have a look on YouTube, see if anyone's got a snow tutorial, how to colour snow. <laughs> or maybe I'll just wing it. Wing it, wing it like an arm would do. Uh, I hate it. when you get to the edge of the page, it's so irritating. <laughs> I'm sat here thinking about what I want for lunch in my head. <laughs> like mountains and all that. I've got like a, um, well, it's a microwave meal actually. <laughs> it's like meatballs um, in pasta. Like pasta and meatball type thing. That's a low, low calorie. Might have that for my lunch. Oh my lord. 
the head to get down here. <laughs> Not head, it's just annoying. Annoying! I think it must be handy. With the hair pressure I'm putting down, I probably could have been done with putting some pad in here so I don't put indentations on there because I'm going in with quite some hair pressure around these black areas here. Quite a lot of hair pressure. He's concentrating. <laughs> silence. Some people like the silence, don't they? When watching videos. Alright, let's chat more action. <laughs> the middle section done do, do, do. again there now just this side now it's big head and this little um so i'll probably finish that and then we'll call it that part done i think guys right in the bottom again there There's not as much shading in some of this. There's not really any shading here. On the top of his paw, I must have like a highlight there. Hopefully I'm not too zoomed in. I did notice on one of my videos that I did recently, I zoomed in that far that every time I came to colour, um, my hand was in perfect focus and then what I was colouring was sort of blurred out. Because <laughs> my hand was so close to the camera. I mean, it could have happened again. It could have happened again looking at that camera angle. Could have. I hope not. Has anybody got their eye on any new release books? Anything in the pipelines? I think I've only heard about the uh, Cobra Rosans Alien Worlds. I've not heard of any other releases at the moment. I don't do the Amazon paper, so any ones that are coming out on Amazon paper are probably no no for me.
I've seen what the new colour in heaven edition is going to be. I think it's by Anne Stokes. The illustrations inside it. For anyone that likes her artwork. I like her artwork, but the style of colouring pages is not my cup of tea. It's not the type of style I like to colour. Really. So I'll be giving this one a miss. This time. I didn't buy the fledging, was it called fledging furries or something like that? I didn't buy that one. And I actually like some of the illustrations in it. I did like the Christine Karen little ones, but it's a case of me only buying ones that I'm really, really super excited about now with the colour in heaven. Because it takes a lot for me to want to colour on that paper. It really does. I bought the Ennis edition because, you know, I was really excited about that one. And obviously Ennis's PDFs are really expensive on Etsy. So to get them all in that colour and have a magazine was, a, you know, a bargain. That's why I got that one, mainly. I saw a poll up on the, I don't know whether it was Instagram or Facebook for Colour in Heaven and it was a poll asking do people prefer light grayscale or line art? Um, so I don't know what they're planning on doing with that information but I put light grayscale because I do. I prefer a light grayscale. It's more, it's easier I think. It's easier because you don't have to think about where you're putting your shading. You just follow. You just follow the lines, don't you? Basically. <laughs> and it always looks better. Like the end result always looks better, I think. That's his arm. I'm going to leave it quite a lot lighter just because Kirby Rosanne's has left it a lot lighter with the shade and areas and so it stands out from the body because this body bit here is quite dark so I want the arm to sort of be prominent so it's not blending in with the background. This one kind of is blending in a bit. Possibly should have left a bit more highlights there, but you can always erase. I can always erase a little bit out. Just sharpening my pencil, guys. Let's get this arm done now. Let's stir it up here. Oh, I've planted my willow wand from nursery as well. You might be thinking, what the, what the ruddy hell is that a willow wand? Well, um, nursery entered a competition because they had a big dig day and they made the nursery garden beautiful. Um, I believe they entered a competition and they won lots of these willow wands. And um, they asked parents if they wanted one and if parents wanted one, they could take one home to plant at home. And it's like a little... It's like a little willow tree, but it's been like the, um, I don't want to say branches because they're called something else, <laughs> but the sort of branch things have been sort of weaved, like twisted at the bottom so that it's like when it grows, it's a decorative twisted branch at the bottom and then it has like a topiary bush on the top when it grows. But I put a little picture in and then you can say, but they have a Facebook group called Willow Wand as well. If you type Willow Wand in on Facebook, it'll prop up. And um, they have a website as well. But they're really cute. So I've put mine in a little decorative planter. Um, 
It says to pull off any shoots that grow below the decorative neck thing that it's got so that you always have that sort of <laughs> I don't know what to call it you always have that part and then the bushy bits just on the top basically um, but I'm really excited to see how it, how it grows and the flowers that come on it um, it says it needs watering every day it says within six weeks it'll have the um, you know have a good growth on top of it but it says to keep it trimmed back so that it gets um, a denser bush. <laughs> oh, I'm picking all the right words today, aren't I? Jeez. But yeah, so I'll have to leak after that. Needs lots of water. It says it survives in England just fine because it can live in up to it can live up to minus twenty degrees. And we don't get anywhere near that here. <laughs> we don't get anywhere near that here in England. I think the most we've had in England is minus three or minus two. And that's, you know, it's not very often. There we go. So moving on to his face now. Oh, his face. It's a little cute berry face. This isn't going to be as dark. You can see the areas that Kirby's put in around here are a lot lighter than here. So there'll be some darkness here, really, really dark, and around the earring up here. But the rest of it is pretty pale. Chair's squeaking, squeak, squeak, squeak. I've not got the best jacket on to be sat at this chair. It causes more squeaking. It's like a, it's not real leather, but it's like a, you know, leather imitation jacket. I've got on, whatever you call it. The only thing when recording on my phone is I don't know if my partner's rung me or not on his, on his dinner because I can't see my phone ringing. And I never know what time it is because I don't have a clock in my bedroom. I normally just look at my phone for the time and I can't see the time on my phone when I'm recording. So I'm like, mm. I can see how long I've been recording for. A long time. <laughs> A long time and I've not done much. <laughs> I find it's even worse when I'm live streaming. Like, I haven't live streamed very often. I think I've only live streamed like a handful of times. But when you live stream, it's just all about the chat. You're like having a good convo with people and answering people's questions. And then you look down and think, what have I actually coloured? Zero. <laughs> Zero. not done a live stream in ages i keep saying i'll get back to live streaming but the only problem is the times that all my viewers are on are the times when i can't stream so it's a bit of a boo-boo um the only times i can really stream is like probably 10 o'clock in the morning 10 a.m in gmt um so you can imagine what time that would be everywhere else in the world. Really, really early. Really, really early. So nobody's on. <laughs> nobody's on that early. So I could go live, but I wouldn't have anybody there watching, probably. <laughs> yeah, the perfect time, really, for me... To stream to get the viewers is 7pm but I just can't do it. At that time I have to get my children in bed and you know it can take me anywhere up to two hours. It can take me from seven till nine o'clock to get my kids in bed. So it's just it's a definite no-go being able to stream in the evenings. 
unfortunately. Stuff to work with what you've got, don't you? <laughs> I'm sure there will come a time where they're all good at bedtime. We just get themselves off to bed. She hopes. <laughs> she hopes. Some of them aren't too bad. Some of them are. <laughs> My eldest is quite sensible now as well. There was a point where I, I had to keep going in, telling her, you know, come on, you're at school in the morning now. Because she would be on the Xbox till God knows what time. Really silly times at night. Um, laughing and joking. And I'd have to keep telling her, come on now, quieten down and uh, settle down, get in your bed. Um, but now I don't have to tell her, she just goes to bed at a decent time, which is good. I think she's realised that it makes her very tired in the morning when she stays up. I think she's realised that herself. She's 13. But she's reached that point as well where she's really, you know, interested in looking after herself and her looks and how she looks in the morning for school. She never used to be bothered. I used to have to drag her in the shower, like, come on, you need a shower <laughs> type of thing. But now she's forever getting in by herself. Don't need prompting. She learned, she started putting socks in her hair at night. Do you remember when, well, I don't remember because I'm not that old, but I remember my mum saying she used to put rags in her hair. And they used to, like, twist rags around your hair so that when you woke up in the morning, your hair was curly. Well, my daughter's been doing it with socks. <laughs> So she's been going to bed wrapping these socks around her at night and then waking up in the morning with these gorgeous bouncy curls and I'm like, teach me. <laughs> I'm rubbish with her. I'm the worst. She must have been looking on YouTube or TikTok how to do all these things. Um, Yeah, and it's gorgeous when she wakes up in the morning. She wakes up like a goddess. And I'm like, I wake up like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. Tell you what. I said you'll have to do my hair, Ruby. <laughs> I can't even do a French braid, I'm telling you. I'm the world's worst. It's a good job my girls don't do dancing or anything because I won't be able to do the hair. We get in there slowly, it'll be with it. It's one of them pages where it's a bit of labour bit of a labour of love. But by the end, you know, I'm hoping. I'm hoping it'll be nice. And I'm doing it in pencil because I want to be safe. I don't want another auto disaster. I want this to be a nice page. Let's get that darkness in near his eye. I say he, could be she, he knows. Do you know how to determine polar bear sex? Sex is no idea. <laughs> you know, I've been um, filming for a long time when I start chatting rubbish. Start going a bit crazy. Dark under there. Put a nice little highlight in the eye at the end as well. And darken up his little his little eyes. Was it this page that someone created? I'm sure it was this page, you know. They transformed it and I'm sure they put like a, um, a fizzy drink can here or they'd drawn like a fizzy drink can. 
I'm trying to show that like we're polluting the o oceans. I'm pretty sure it was this page I saw it on. It was amazing how they'd done it. I can't remember if it was this page or not. I think it was. 99% sure it was. there There we go. So with the shade in there, I've created like a um, like the fur ripples on his face, sort of thing. <laughs> Don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And I'm going to leave it at that, I think. So all I'm going to do with this now is just go in with my Caran d'Ache blender. This is the full blender. I'm hoping it works well on this page. And I'm just going to go into the areas where I've left a bit whiter and just blend them, blend them in. I hope it'll all smoosh, smooshy and nicely. Emergency vehicle going past, nothing near there. Might be two going past. Police. There's always something going past this main mod. Always something. in some areas it's merging because it's really good at blending this pencil it's blending too much blue into the white where i want it to stay quite white so i'm just being careful i'm bringing it up to the white highlight but i'm not going to go into the white highlight with this i'm going to possibly get my white pencil or my other caran d'ache blender because i don't want to lose all the bits that i want to stay white so you just have to be careful with this one because it's so good at blending. It will blend all the blue into the white. Which on some pages you want that. Like down here, I don't mind it blending it in. It makes it just a paler version of what you've put down. So in some areas I don't mind doing that sort of want that to happen in some places but then some places i want to keep the bright white slowly coming together I'm 
the hand I'm going to be careful here because I want to leave some of the highlights here I'm just going to blend it a little bit that fly's come back to haunt me that blue bottle fly and I'm going to leave this bit here Again, I'm going to be a bit more careful on the face where I want to leave the bright white in. the other blender we'll get this one this is the wooden barrel one just give it a little shape now I'm going to go in over the white bits with this one it'll just keep them a bit, bit brighter go now I do want a white just for here a white or an ivory I'll go for an ivory There we go, so I'm going to leave it at that 
for this video. We have gone over an hour now, and that's how long it's took me. <laughs> that's how long it's took me to do that. So you can see when you take your time with pages, they do take that a bit longer. Um, but the top bit, because it's sort of a continuation of the polar bear, isn't it? Like the polar bear is turning into this rock kind of thing. So, but because this is above water, I'm gonna go in with a bit, bit of a paler. So the same colours we used, but paler. So I'll probably, the base colour that we used, I'll probably keep more of that in the top bit. So the cobalt green that we used, I'll keep more of that in the top. And only a little bit of the helio turquoise. But when we come back, we'll be colouring something different. Um, possibly the water and the seals um, the next time I pop on. So do give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.